know we all go through some things, especially as leaders, it can be very lonely. Staff Sergeants Alexis Monroe and Lamar Riddick from the U.S. Army Field Band performing at the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion Change of Command. More on that in a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Maryland offers a motorcycle safety course and a look at Fort Meade's Pride Month observance. These stories and much more, but first, on the last Mead Week, we reported on the possibility of changes in hours at the access control points, particularly the MAPES Maryland 32 gate. This week, that possibility is now a reality. Starting July 5th, the MAPES 32 gate will close at 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and will be closed on weekends and holidays. On the last Mead Week and at this month's Installation Town Hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp explained that the changes come due to a decrease in manpower at the gates. For more, you can watch the Town Hall on our Facebook page, click on Videos, and scroll to June 12th. In other news, the Fort Meade Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion provides support services, law enforcement, working dog teams, force protection, and base support operations for the entire Fort Meade community. More than 12,000 service members, 35,000 civilians, and 60,000 family members and retirees. The battalion welcomed a new commander in a recent ceremony at Club Meade. I said in my incoming speech, I continue to stand upon the shoulders or in the shadows of giants. As I leave this role, I remember who got me to this point leaders and mentors pulling me, peers pushing me, and subordinates propelling me. Pull, push, propel, purpose. Thank all of you. It's truly an honor to take command of such a talented and diverse organization, and I'm absolutely excited for the opportunity. You can always count on change being a constant in the Army. We're always looking forward, never backward, progression. Be all you can be. Be fluid. Axe Hammer 6 signing off. If you're catching this week's show before July 8th, you can still donate at the next Fort Meade Blood Drive. It's coming up on Monday, July 8th from 9 to 1 at the McGill Training Center. Check out our social media posts on how to sign up. Or for more information, go to health.mil slash militaryblood. Meanwhile, the state of Maryland offers a motors rider safety course at schools and other locations throughout the state. This summer, they brought the class to Fort Meade. Taught by Maryland State Law Enforcement Officers, it features a motorcycle check, professional riding techniques, a mentored ride, and more. The class isn't a substitute for the mandatory basic riders course that's needed to ride a motorcycle on a military installation, but Desmond Rogers from the Installation Safety Office highly encourages riders to check it out. Being military, they ride everywhere. So they go to California, they go to Maryland, they go to Virginia, they go to Texas, and everybody has different laws when it comes to motorcycles, right? So the best thing here is we have the state troopers that come out and they tell them all the rules and regulations about Maryland. So no matter where you're coming from, you come here, there's different laws. And they'll let you know, hey, this may be allowed other places, but it's not allowed here, right? And they just, just kind of give you the sense of Maryland and how Maryland operates for motorcycle riders. So I think it's good for everybody that's coming here that has a motorcycle. In other news, the Department of Defense recognizes June as Pride Month, recognizing the contributions and sacrifices of LGBTQ plus service members. Fort Meade's observance began with a recent run for Pride at Mullins Field. The event was coordinated by the 70th Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Wing. Our commitment within the Department of Defense is to building a cohesive, respectful, and empowered community. And that's a fundamental aspect of our strength. Creating an environment where every individual is respected and valued is essential to our mission. Fostering a culture of acceptance not only enhances the readiness and resilience of our force, it ensures that all of our members can serve and thrive without fear of discrimination or prejudice. Fort Meade's observance also included the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade hosting a panel discussion at Club Meade this week. We'll have more on that event on our Facebook page. And finally this week, as I mentioned earlier, more than 35,000 civilians work at Fort Meade. That workforce has an opportunity to let its voice be heard. Currently, the annual Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey is out. We have made improvements in our FEVS scores, which is the best indicator that we have of employee satisfaction and the things that are important to our workforce. We always have more room to improve in those trends, and we also want to ensure that we get more input from a larger segment of our workforce. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann for everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office. Have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.